Hello and welcome to the channel for another video. So today we're going to be looking at making the ultimate fire starters or fire lighters. I'm primarily going to use these with my bush box wood stove, uh, but I'll also use them for campfires occasionally. I'm sure you've seen people before making fire starters out of these cotton wool cosmetic pads. Um, often they'll mix them with Vaseline or with uh, candle wax and uh, make a fire starter out of that. But I think I've got a far better recipe. I'm going to share that with you today. Also, we're going to uh, try the Vaseline and the uh, candle wax just to uh, compare it to my recipe and see which is better. So what we're looking for in a good fire starter is a uh, flame that burns hot enough and strong enough to uh, get a fire established. We want it to burn for long enough that we've got time to get that fire going. And also, ideally, we want it to be waterproof. So that if our fire starters get damp, it's not going to be a problem and it'll still light our fire. As I say, I'm sure you've seen a number of people using Vaseline to uh, impregnate their cotton wool balls or cotton wool pads. And uh, that's a perfectly good way of doing it, but I find it a quick bit messy and uh, therefore not the ideal for me. But I am going to use Vaseline as part of the uh, recipe for my pads. So let's uh, give that a go. We'll make some Vaseline impregnated pads while we're at it. I've got some water boiling here ready, so uh, we're going to melt the Vaseline so we can make use of it. Got to be a little careful with this because we don't want to melt the uh, plastic pot. But we're just going to chuck it in there for uh, a few seconds just to uh, get the Vaseline inside warmed up and softened up so we can get it into the pot a bit easier. Now I'm going to use a uh, old tin can as my uh, means of melting the uh, Vaseline when I have it fully melted. So that's been in there for a little over a minute now, so uh, hopefully that should be melted enough. If we uh, pop it out, we can have a quick look. So as you can see, that's almost all liquid now, so that should be good to uh, pour into my tin. Take the lid off. And then it goes. So that can go in there and inside the tin I no longer have to worry at all about the Vaseline melting in the uh, pot. But as you can see there's no damage at all to the pot so the pot will take a fair bit of temperature. Vaseline melts at around 45 to 50 degrees centigrade. So as I say for many people this is how they make their uh, fire starters but we're going to take this a step further and do a few more things to it uh, later on. For now stage one we're just going to drop the cotton wool pad into the melted Vaseline. Give it a couple of seconds and we're going to pull it out. I have neglected to bring any tweezers or anything with me today so we're just going to use a couple of tent pegs and uh, we'll fetch it out. We just want to let it drip for a bit, get any excess off there and then we're going to lay it out on some baking parchment to let it set. So baking parchment, grease proof paper, anything non-stick like that, anything that you would be able to peel them off quite easily later. So that's the first one. I'm going to make a whole batch of these. Drop it in there. Pick it out. Leave it drip. And place it on the baking parchment. go we've got a batch of the uh, Vaseline impregnated cotton wool pads made up ready uh, I definitely recommend that you uh, get a pair of tongs next time I've always previously used tongs but I forgot them today but the tent pegs did the job um, but now we're done we can take the tin out of there it's just cool enough at the top to be able to grab once this is cooled down enough I can put a uh, lid on it a tin lid um, this is actually off an old coffee can and um, I can save that in the garage end for the next time so it won't go to waste. So you're going to want to let these set now. Um, if you want to accelerate it you can put them in the fridge or the freezer and uh, they'll set really quickly then just a few minutes. But 10-20 minutes outdoors will do the job as well. Now 
Now, as I said in the intro, a lot of people use candle wax to impregnate their cotton buds, but I'm going to use it as an outer coating. So I've got here some candle wax that I used for a previous project, which has been uh, melted into a takeaway tub. So uh, I'm just going to chop it up into uh, manageable pieces so I can put it in my tin to melt. So uh, you could do this with any candle. Um, just grab an old candle you're not using anymore or the stub of an old candle and just break up some chunks with a simple knife. Just shave off some bits so it'll melt easily. So once we've uh, chopped up enough wax, we're uh, going to take a, another old baked bean tin. I'm going to put our wax into the baked bean tin. Try to make as little mess as possible. And we'll put our tin full of wax into the water to get it to melt. So it shouldn't take more than a few minutes for the wax to melt. Uh, the wax melts at around 70 degrees, depending on what grade of uh, wax you're using. Any wax will do. It could be uh, scented, it could be coloured, it really doesn't matter. Um, can be a pure paraffin wax, can be one of the uh, plant-based ones. Really doesn't matter, they'll all work. Obviously you'll get a slight difference in uh, burn time. Later on I am going to add something to this for my uh, own recipe. But first of all I want to make some plain paraffin wax uh, pads just so we can compare my recipe to the sort of thing that other people are using. So there we go, the wax is pretty much totally well melted. There's a tiny bit at the bottom that hasn't yet, but I'm sure that will in a minute. So I'm going to put the first pad in, and exactly the same as we did with the Vaseline, just drop it in there, and then fish it out. Allow it to drip off. And then we're going to put it down on our greaseproof paper. We'll make up a couple of these uh, plain wax ones. There we go, so we've got three plain wax ones. Now we're going to go on to my preferred recipe. So what I do is I put a little bit of olive oil in there. Just a little bit, not too much. Roughly 10% of the overall mixture. Now what that does is it makes the outer waterproof shell of wax a little bit softer, so it's easier to tear, particularly when you've got cold hands in the winter. I also find that adding a little bit of uh, beeswax helps make them burn a bit longer. But I haven't got any beeswax at the moment, so we're going to manage without that. But yeah, 10% beeswax is uh, the way I often go, but it's not essential. So we give that a quick stir. And now for my preferred recipe, we're going to take some of these pads that we've pre-impregnated with Vaseline, and we're going to uh, dip these in the candle wax. So you can see the Vaseline has now gone uh, relatively hard. It's still a bit messy, still a bit sticky, but uh, we're going to coat these with uh, the wax now. Drop it in. And pull it straight back out. Let it drip. And then back onto our uh, wax sheet. So there we go, we've made our fire starters. So we've got a batch here of my preferred recipe. I probably should have used uh, different colour waxes or something to make it clearer. But these ones here are uh, my preferred uh, recipe with the uh, Vaseline core and then the uh, paraffin wax and olive oil uh, outer. But here we've got some that have just got Vaseline and then these ones on the end are pure paraffin wax. So we're gonna uh, try burning the these now to see the difference. As before, we can take the uh, wax off the stove, it's 
good bit left in there so uh, once it's cooled down a little bit more I'll put the lid on and that can uh, go back in my garage just like the Vaseline ready for uh, future use. So purely looking at the feel of these different types of uh, fire lighters the ones that are just impregnated with Vaseline they're soft you can bend them quite easily um, you can rip them apart with difficulty because they're so slimy it's difficult to get your fingers in to rip them apart and all of these you want to rip them apart in order to uh, expose the fibers to light them up you can see how uh, messy that is so you couldn't just put those in your bag uh, as they are you need to uh, store them in a bag or something because uh, they really are messy you can see the uh, mess over my fingers already the ones that are made out of uh, paraffin wax they're uh, hard really solid so I uh, take them on there you can see and again to tear these to expose the fibers it's a bit stiffer you need to pull a bit harder but it's a lot easier than the uh, Vaseline ones I really don't like the Vaseline ones they're far too messy but these ones are reasonably easy to use so definitely prefer the paraffin wax to the uh, Vaseline and last but by no means least my preferred recipe so these again aren't hard they're more like the uh, Vaseline impregnated ones that's the advantage of the uh, olive oil it makes them far easier to rip apart and uh, you can do so without it being uh, messy let's rip these apart and there we go so let's try burning them so let's give these a go then we've got the uh, pure paraffin wax on this side We've got the uh, Vaseline on its own there. Then we've got my preferred mix with the olive oil and paraffin wax on the outside and the uh, Vaseline on the inside here. So let's give this a go. see the paraffin wax on its own it's actually quite difficult to get lit if we start the stopwatch there hopefully you can see that and hopefully I won't knock my phone Just to demonstrate, try blowing on these and uh, see if any of them go out. There you go. As you can see, I neatly demonstrated why I'm not so keen on the uh, paraffin wax. It's really quite difficult to uh, light the paraffin wax. Fun's uh, in the fire a bit there, so I'll move that over really quite difficult to light the paraffin wax and uh, also it goes out really easily so on a windy day it's not the best bet get worried about my phone there Ooh, I'll move the phone out <laughs>
so you can see so you can see that the uh, plain paraffin wax is the first to go out about four and a half minutes and now the uh, Vaseline one has just gone out just after that but my preferred uh, recipe is still burning it is true though that the uh, Vaseline was the first one to be lit so I've uh, got to give it a few extra bonus seconds for that it definitely lasted longer than the uh, plain paraffin wax and it was far harder to put out but you can see that uh, my preferred recipe is burning for quite some time longer let's see how long it goes I've had to move things around a little bit because uh, the fire was a bit close to my phone So there we go, it's finally died around 6 minutes and 15 seconds. Now that's pretty good. That's uh, a minute and three quarters longer than the other two. So I think we've proved there that my recipe is the uh, best all around. The uh, Vaseline one uh, is really messy, so I'm not a big fan of handling that. It's difficult to uh, transport um, and, as I say, messy, difficult to tear apart. The uh, solid paraffin ones. They're uh, a little bit more difficult to uh, tear apart and also they get really easy to uh, put out, difficult to light and uh, so not ideal from that point of view. Let's say a single gust of wind and uh, they, they go out. That's what I really don't like about those. But my recipe burns for the longest, really easy to uh, light, it's uh, easy to tear, they're uh, clean to handle, no uh, slime, no mess. So all around uh, the best to use, I think, which is why I use these. The final thing we spoke about earlier was seeing how waterproof these are. So let's show, if I uh, put these into a uh, thing of water, we leave it in there for a little while, and then uh, fish it out. So there we go, the water won't have uh, impregnated that at all. So if I rip that open, I should be able to light that fairly easy, easily. There you go, as you can see. Very easy to light, and it's just been in that uh, tub of water. I feel I need to finish the video by owning up to a mistake. I've managed to burn the grass here, and uh, leave no trace is the way I usually like to do things, and uh, I'm a little upset that I've managed to do this today. Usually when I use my bush box with the uh, base plate on the bottom, there's never a single mark on the floor, nothing at all. Um, but today, so you could see more clearly, I chose to uh, use just the base plate, and that wasn't adequate to uh, protect the grass. So lesson learned, I uh, will avoid that in future and uh, perhaps clear the ground or uh, not ever just use the base plate again. Anyway, I feel it's only right I own up to my mistake. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, please uh, click uh, the like button. Uh, really helps the channel out. See you on the next one.